Hey guys, how's it going? Hopefully you guys can see and hear my starting screen. Let's see. Hey, Holly. Hey, Sony. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Anna. Or Ann. Hey, Go Kart. Hey, Kimberly. Kimberly's taking her exam on 9 9. Awesome. <laughs> Holly ordered a bunch of new pens. Awesome. KL. Hey, Karen. She's taking her test next week. Oh, and she really heard good things about me. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, Mogan. Hey, Susie. Hey, Denise. Let's see. I hope y'all can hear me. Can y'all hear me yet? I got a one yes, maybe. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Lorraine. Hey, Terry. Hey, Ramon. Now, okay. Hey, Jen B. We're going to get this, Denise. Hey, Allie. Ten days till you take yours? Awesome. Great. Thank you, Holly. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you guys for the thumbs up on the YouTube uh, videos, any of them that you guys watch. That really helps out. I've gotten um, more subscribers this month than I have in like the six months I've been on YouTube. So thank you guys. That's awesome. Thank you, Lorraine. You going to take your exam on your dad's birthday? Oh, 100% going to pass then, right? Dev takes hers on the 29th. Yep, I've got that down. Craig is also the 29th. April, if she's in here, is August 5th. Crystal or Christina, 18th. Nicole is the 6th. Um, trying to watch out for everybody. Holly is the 24th. Hey, Nicole. Good to see you. All right. Y'all can see the starting screen. Let me get over here to the Word document. Um, let's see. Top advice for today, if you were going to take the exam this week. Um, anatomy parts to know is like eye stuff. Um, mouth stuff skin stuff so like um barthons um glands um skin gland um the itchy skin starts with a u i won't be able to spell it um also um T R I C H that skin condition. Um, what else? Eyes. You've got the lacrimal gland. Um, it's also called day cry, something like that. Um, no stuff about that. Um, no about HIPAA. Uh, when did it start? That kind of stuff. Dates are always fun. Um, NCCI, um, 
L local and national determination. Um, be sure and know your local and national determination stuff. Um, what else am I forgetting, guys? Acronyms, A R D S. They love acronyms. Anything with acronyms, they love it. Um, be sure you know that last page in the CPT book is um, whoops, full of acronyms. So, like, um, where is my, right here. Yep, the very back cover of your CPT book is just a bunch of acronyms. Be sure you know where this page is, and be sure you know that some of the definitions have multiple definitions, like um, IVC. If you look at its definition, there's two of them there. So if you read and the first one doesn't match, look and make sure there isn't two definitions there. Also, around page um, 600 of your book, in Lab and Path, there's another acronym page. It starts on page 604 if you happen to have the 2023 book. And it ends on page 606. But this is where a lot of um, the drugs are listed. And then there's an acronym one. There's an acronym one. And that one is on page 600, 599, and 601. More acronyms on these pages. Be sure you know where to find those acronyms, too. Super helpful. Um, some appendixes you should know for this weekend, if you're going to take the test, is something you've probably not thought of, but page 964, be sure you know where Appendix K is. So if they ask you which one of these answers is pending FDA approval, Instead of looking up each CPT code individually to see if it has that lightning bolt um, symbol beside it, you can just run to Appendix K and look for the correct answer on this list because they're all in numerical order. Super handy to know where that list is at. And then um, I'm just showing out now. Um, if they ask you which one is an add-on code, um, Appendix D is a full list of all the add-on codes um, in numerical order, so you don't have to go find them, and then you can just pick the answer of which one is the correct one, and then they have another one that sometimes they ask. Um, I think... It's not O. I know it's not O, and N is not it. Those are the resequence summaries. Which ones have the hashtags? It's just our crosswalk. Appendix L is fun to do. I like Appendix L. Appendix F. Appendix F. Which one of the which one of these codes is modifier 63 exempt? You've got a full list of those right here in numerical order, so you don't have to go look up each individual code to see if you have that circle with the line through it um, symbol. You can just run here and see which answer it is. So those are real handy-dandy modifier um, appendixes you've got in the back of the book that can be super helpful in getting you 
to answer questions a lot faster than looking up individual codes. Yep, 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 yep. I'm checking back up with chat real quick to see what I've missed. Uh oh, somebody passed. There you go. You you got that uh, that um um vocabulary word that I was blanking on. I've had a really busy day today, guys. Oof. I had to work and then I had to take the kids up to the high school to get their ID badges. U R T I C A R I A. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. That is the word I was looking for. Yep, yep, yep. ABN. Oh, yeah, ABN. That's a good one. Anything to do with ABN, be sure you know all about that. And that modifier, GW, uh, the CLIA waiver modifier. Uh, what one is that one? What's that one? GA for ABN and the CLIA waiver Q. W. QW, not GW, Q. QW and CLIA waiver. Yeah. And then the ABN one is um, GA. GA. Yeah. Those two modifiers. Yep, yep. Sure, you know those. You never know. It could be helpful. Um, somebody is saying me D I A S T I N U M to know that, that, uh, knowing the chest lining wall and we got our U R T I C A R I A and super helpful to know about those. Meningitis, oh yeah, um, my ring versus, um, what's the other one? Um, T-Y-M-P, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are we putting a tube in the ear or not? Differences in those is super handy to know. ALS and BLS. Yep. Did we have an EMT team on the ambulance or did we have a paramedic and an EMT on the ambulance? Yep. Super handy to know. Hey, Alexis. She says, I hope you're doing well tonight. I'm a little tired, a little frazzled because it's been a really busy day, but... Happy to be here. Have literally watched all your videos on repeat and learned something new every time. Aw, that's awesome. She's taken hers in a few weeks. I know it's a lot of talk and you hear about my family and I tell stories and I, I rattle on and I'm sorry about that. I talk a lot when I'm nervous, but I do hope that it is, there's something in there of value to, to spend all that time watching my videos. I don't have like a video editor and I don't professionally put this out like an organized situation. I'm just trying to be here and talk and help you guys as much as I can in all the free time I have. And I hope it does make a difference. Last workshop you did medicine section Available to the memberships to watch. No, I was gifted a membership. Yes, Imad, you were given a membership. And all the workshops get published to the membership on YouTube after they are 90 days old. So, yes, my last workshop this Sunday was on medicine, anesthesia, and ENM, But it won't be available for 90 days. That's because people paid $12 to attend it and they get to do the replay for 90 days because they supported me by paying the 12 bucks for um, creating 
the three hours with no talk <laughs> and doing it more professionally, you know, where I, my kids aren't around and, and we go straight in for each question. We did 75 questions and three hours in the same pace as the um, exam so that I could show you exactly how I would attack each question if I was doing the exam. I don't get every one of them correct, but they all do have the rationale and the correct answer there. It's a great way for you guys to study because you could pause the screen for every question and try to get the answer yourself if y'all are watching the replay. But yeah, those don't go out for the general population that pay for a monthly membership until they're 90 days old. But once they're 90 days old, yes, they will be there. All the paid YouTube memberships, those are like $4.99 a month. They get access to all the exclusive videos, which are all of last year's workshops. So there are a bunch from last year and all of them that are over 90 days old for this year. The guideline one still needs to go out. I did a workshop the month before this with all guideline questions. Um, that one's still a good one. It's still got 60 days till it goes live. And then um, I think we just published the integumentary and musculoskeletal one live for you guys that was done in January or February. That one went to the memberships. Also with the YouTube memberships, you get the book prep where you get to watch my videos on how I do um, the um, book prep on all the CPT codes and anatomy. So that's cool. It's last year's and this year's books. Um, as I updated codes and stuff, you get those replays. So super helpful. All right. Ah, Isabella, she passed her exam. She got an 80, awesome. Fantastic, congratulations. Thanks for hopping in to chat and letting us know. Are you going to take any other um, certifications? Just curious. You don't have to. I know that's the biggest challenge there is to get that CPC. Also, um, was there anything that showed up on the exam that I didn't prepare you for? You didn't know was going to be on there? Anything you saw that was like really out of the ordinary? Or hopefully I've at least tried to go over some a little bit of everything that's on there at one time or another. Appendix K, pending FDA approval. Yep. Where can we see the practice test on Jen's website? I'll show you. Let's see. So there's my website. It's medicalcodingbyjen.com. It is a free website set up for you guys, but once you get to the URL right there, just scroll down. You'll get to see all about me. And there is the exam right there. I think you can push this little button right there and make it full screen. And then you can hit start and do the exam right there. And then make it little screen right there if you want to. Yeah. But don't forget on my website, I also have plenty of free resources for you guys. So under resources tab, CPT book prep. You can go there. I just need to sign in. And um, you can see the eight pictures that I have for um, book prep. And all you got to do when you get there is just click on each picture. And you'll see the instructions on what to do and why I'm doing it. Super helpful. It's all free. Um, also, I show you how I do the anatomy book prep. Just click on the pictures. It'll show you the instructions and how to do ICD-10 book prep. It's all free. And there's some one-pager guidelines for all kinds of stuff. I've got uh, sequela, late effect, how to code that, uh, heart attacks, HIPAA rules, sepsis. This is the answers for all four areas of sepsis right there. Just write those examples in your book. Um, how to code and what the answer would be for twin deliveries and what I mean by parent and child code and an example of what that is. That's all there for free. 
Don't forget you've got under shared gallery all kinds of pictures that I like to share and you guys can share your own pictures too but there's a lot of things in here like what camera do I use when do you go live um, how do I send and what email do I send it out to to get an extra hour on my exam um, if I wanted five hours to take it uh, the component pages that you need to add to all the immunizations each immunization is comprised of so many components. And if by chance you get the one version of the exam that gives you an immunization question that makes you multiply components of vaccines, you need to know how many components there are in, in the vaccines. It's not available in the CPT book. They don't tell you unless you know. So that's what these pages are. You can just click on them and the CPT code is in one column and the number of components is in the other column. So you can just copy that into your book. Um, just lots of helpful stuff here on the on my website, all for free, of course. And if you do want to attend a next workshop, I will have it scheduled here. For right now, um, I don't have the next month scheduled, but it will be, I think, um, August 16th. We'll do it on that Sunday, and we're going to do um, a few questions from all 17 sections of the exam instead of just one section concentrating on. We're going to do all, we're going to try to do all 17 in three hours. We'll see. <laughs> and then my repeat um, advanced classes will start back August 4th. Um, on that Friday, not this Friday, but next Friday, if anybody wants to attend two-hour tutoring with me in a small group, those classes start back up, and they're five bucks on Fridays if anybody wants to attend. But um, that's what we got going on here. Don't forget to join our Discord group. You've got two years' worth of information in that free study group. If you have practice exam questions, if you're in a course, if you have questions that I can't get to because I'm just some lady on the Internet who does work full time, don't forget that. And I have three sons at home and my mother to take care of. And I teach here for free three nights a week. And I'm just trying to help you guys. But if I can't get to everybody's emails and questions, there is a huge support group inside of our free Discord group that can help you out, too. So everybody's in there. Go-karts in there. MK. Twinkle, everybody can help you out, and um, super helpful. Super helpful community we've built right there. Other educators, I've got a full list right there, and I even have a blog of stuff if y'all wanted to get into it, into reading some of the blogs. And that's me, and that's where I'm teaching you guys at right now. Oh, let's see. Let me turn that off. And boy, I have the questions tonight. I have a ton of questions to show y'all. Let me get back into chat and see what else did we lose. ALS finally back. Hey, Vanessa. You're in a washing machine right now. Aw. Speaking of washing machines, my um, mother is insisting on buying another washing machine. We have one. It's only two years old. But it's a Samsung, and that thing leaks like crazy. Don't ever buy anything that's Warthon's tumor. You're right. Don't ever buy Samsung's. Anyway, so she's having a fit for a new washing machine. So I think she went and bought one today, going to have it delivered Monday. Then she got home from Home Depot and said, no, I want a different one. So now she's canceling that one and going to do another one. So it's like, Mom, you're doing too much. It's just a washing machine. Warthons. Yep. If you don't know where that is, that's part of the mouth or jawline gland, but tumor. Where would that be? Super cool. Be sure to know that. Hey, Nancy. 
get with Twinkle. She'll let you, she'll send you the correct link for um, the workshop if you're having issues getting it or it working. She should be here in just a little bit. Message her on Discord. She'll get you the link. Anne says she feels like she's learned more in a couple of live lessons. Aww. And you did the E&M workshop. That's great. Then you did on your 16 weeks instructor at the AAPC course. Yeah, I've got this TikTok, guys, that I don't know if y'all have seen it. Um, there's a TikTok video where I copy, I, I recorded um, AAPC's director of education when she was talking about the differences between the course and the certification exam. And she said that they do that on purpose. The, the, the course is not meant to prepare you for the certification exam. That's totally separate, totally different entity. And you don't need a course to pass the certification exam. But the course was never intended to prepare you for it. So they they keep those strictly separate entities. So craziness, right? That's why I made my first TikTok. I was like, everybody's spending all their COVID money and not passing their certification exam because they spent, and then they took these courses thinking that that was going to help them pass the certification exam. And it doesn't. There's you got to learn something totally different to pass that exam because that's a different different ball of wax right there. So that's how all this started. I made a TikTok about it, and everybody's like, "Tell me more! Tell me more!" Yay, go kart! I'll enjoy seeing you on the duck classes. Absolutely. I hope life calms down, Vanessa. We appreciate. I I have fun with you guys too, so it's super fun. And I'm glad you're learning from me. That's great. Oh, Alexis, I'm fantastic. All the tips, questions what to write in the coding books, even parts of where you're talking to Travis and the cats, I know. Lester and Magpie, I know, I know. Magpie chirps. She's, she's the tiniest little kitty cat. And then Lester, he's 30 pounds. He's almost, he's like a dog. He's huge. Yeah, he's sitting right behind me right now. He's crazy. He don't move much. He stays right behind me. Let's see. We can see him. He never leaves my side. He's funny. My big old cat. Can y'all see him? Where is he? Let's see. He's right here. So I may not have him. No. What's in the way? I don't know what's in the way. But he's right there on that cat bed. Hanging off of it. Lesty. Can you move? I don't know. Y'all can see him, but he's right there. I'm in Magnolia's today. I had to dress up to go to the boys' school to get their uh, their um, school stuff on. Oh, what happened to the camera? What did I do with it? Did I turn it off? Oh, yeah. There we go. Um, to get their... Um, I like this shirt. But I had to get their uh, school pictures taken today. But I look very Tennessee today in my Arizona outfit. Instead of pajamas, I got real clothes on today. I do work from home. I've been working from home since 2013. But... Remotely. I go in once a year for my annual audit, but today I had to get dressed for the boys. So one question I got asked today was about a pocket prep question, 
and I thought it was a really good question, so I did throw it in for today's lesson. Let me finish up on today's chat while y'all look over this question. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Y'all can let me know if there's any codes y'all want me to go over. I totally wish I could dump on you. Oh my God. I have a lot of pans in the oven and I'm sure you do too. I appreciate y'all being here too and I hope I can help and make a difference. Thanks, Isabella. There's 100 questions on the exam, and you have four hours, so you need to do 25 questions an hour. <laughs> do I do therapy? Do I need therapy? Hmm. Hey V, how's it going? Hey Erin. You love your Samsung? Boy, you should see Holly, my Samsung. My, I love, you know, it's big. It's the biggest capacity dish washing machine ever, but it leaks. It leaks out from the control panel and underneath it. And it's done that ever since I brought it home. And I'm too much of a, I don't like to confront people and fuss and try to get a replacement and oh my gosh but it leaks good lord it leaks everywhere but it's crazy there's twinkle speak of the devil i did do a modifier workshop too yep all modifiers i got some modifier questions for tonight i found some new ones I have a front loader and our one before that was an LG front loader but mom wants to go back to a top loader for some reason so I guess she's gonna go get a top loader Maytag has a top loader that's got on Tom's guide TOM guide that says it was one of the best reviewed for 2023 I think I'm trying to talk her into going to get a Maytag I don't know Thanks, Twinkle. You haven't finished the course? I can show you how to finish the course a whole lot faster and easier that'll help out, too. Hey, Deep, how's it going? Duck classes. Girl, you done passed with like 100% on your certification exam. <laughs> Jennifer House so has a 30 pound cat. This poor boy was the last cat nobody wanted in a shelter. He was an older adult when I adopted him, so he's, he gets babied. Mr. Lester gets babied. Thank you, Twinkle, for giving away a subscription. You're awesome. The beginning of August for Nicole. feline therapy right I hear somebody uh, there's like a group of students that want to come to Arizona and hang out and tutor with me in person Twinkle keeps telling me about it I'm waiting on a message to show up that would be fun I am going to be in Las Vegas when is that I don't remember now is it September maybe September I put uh, an event on Facebook. I don't remember when it is, but I think it's in September. I'm going to be at the AAPC's, what do they call that thing? Their satellite, whatever, local, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm going to be there for their meeting that morning at um, 9 a.m. or whatever. And then we'll be done by noon. So if anybody wants to come to Vegas... And hang out with me. I'll be there all weekend long. Y'all can come pick my brain.
You heard S Speed Queen was the washer to go with. Well, I'll have to Google that. Hey, Cynthia. I would love a washer dryer combo, right? I hear they don't dry 100% all the way well, like you gotta run the dry cycle again. But how lovely would that be not to have to move your stuff from one machine to another and have it just, and, and pull that stuff out of there? With the top loader, I'm short-legged. I'm 5'2", but I'm all torso. I'm, I'm the shortest person in a group of females when we're standing next to each other. But when we sit down on a bench, I'll be the tallest girl on the bench, if that makes any sense. I have a torso meant for babies. I could have, you know, like, I should have had triplets because I've got the big, tall torso. So, but I have no legs to go along with it. So I can't get the clothes out of the bottom of a top loader. I end up falling in there trying to get the dang clothes out of the bottom because my legs don't reach. But anyway, short people issues. I would love a washer and dryer all in one. Vegas Twinkles got it September 15th and 17th. See, what would I do without her? I can't remember dates or names of things. So to join, if you want to be a YouTube member you can sit here and try to win of course because we always give away free youtube memberships while twinkle and i are here hanging out or you can click this join link and you can join uh, payments go through like google play store so when you sign up if you do pay it's it's an auto draft every month for $4.99 out of Google Play. So if you ever want to stop the subscription, you go into your app store and turn it off there, even though you're going through YouTube, is my understanding. But that's the link if you want to join. Can you? I mean, blind, I'm serious. I do. I have to kick my feet up. They're not touching the grounds while I'm reaching down into the dry wash machine trying to pull them wet clothes out of there. You know, that one last sock that won't come out? It just gets rewashed until it finally disintegrates because I can't get down there and get into it. I need, I guess, I need a grabber, but I need a short grabber. You know, with those grabber sticks, they're too long to stick down in the washing machine to get stuff out with because then I can't see what I'm grabbing because the stick's too long. They need to make one of those grabber things that's shorter, like a feather duster size, that could grab clothes out of those top loaders for us short-legged people because <laughs> I guess I should invent something to make a patent, huh? You're five six and you still fall into your top loader. Why do they make them that way? Or why don't they have something that sits at the bottom, you know, and we just pull at the center and that would bring everything up to the surface for us so that we could just pull it all out of there. Why do they make it so difficult? There's, there's engineering. There's something they could do for this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> they know how we work. Yeah, I don't know. It's silly. Okay, let me get back to our little question for this particular one. Y'all let me know in chat if there's any particular codes y'all want to go over tonight that y'all had a question on, and I'll try to get to them. But for this question right here, you guys know, whoops, what happened to this thing? Oh, there we go. I hit it too many times, I bet. No? Okay, good. So we've got the process of elimination and looking for similarities would have me only looking at C and D, and I would not look up these two codes. A lot of people don't like the process of elimination. 
they don't think it's helpful for during the exam, so I'll teach both ways. But if I was doing this question, I would only look at C and D. I would get rid of B and A just because numerically they C and D start out with the same answer. A lot of times with medical coding questions on certification exams, two answers are junk and two answers are super close and there's only one difference between the two answers or something very small change in it. And they want to know, do you know what that difference is and if that is coded in a particular way or not? But if you want to look up all the codes and you want to know what your differences are, you guys know about my trick about the second and third digits of every CPT code. That, not always, but in general, when your second and third digits are different, that usually means there's a header change. So these would be under one header. This is going to be under a different header, and this is going to be under a different header. So instead of going from to each code and reading the CPT code descriptor, I know that these are going to be under different headers. Those headers are easier to decipher than CPT codes when you're searching through a question to see which code would be the correct answer. So what I mean is, let's go to 909, 90966. Nine oh nine sixty six is on page seven thirty nine, but we don't look at the CPT code descriptor. What I want you to do is go backwards until you find a header. It may not be on the same page. It may not be on the previous page. It may be even on the next page before it. So I do find the header, and the header for that particular code nine oh nine sixty six is on page three hundred. 737, and it says it is under end-stage renal disease services. Also, miscellaneous dialysis procedures is very close to that, too. We've got, our next one is 995. Personally, I wouldn't have looked up these codes. I think it, it just slow you down. But a lot of people do not feel comfortable get, getting rid of answers just because they're not numerically the same. 995 is under... Home Health Procedure Services. And 99601 is under Home Health Infusion Procedures. Headers. Headers before descriptors. So... What are we doing to the patient? We search our question. What did we do? We did peritoneal dialysis. For a month.
if you have your one word differences down beside your codes, it can also be super helpful to know that 90966, your guideline for 90966 is this paragraph over here on page 738. It's for a full month's worth of dialysis for end-stage renal disease for home dialysis patients. But I believe that this code is for one month, but it also is for an MD provider. The 99512, if you look at that one, it's for hemodialysis, and it's also it says for home patients' home health. It is used for non non MD for non physician, so it is for personnel. So this could be for. Um, Personnel, like home health personnel, so that's helpful to know. Then the 9601 for the home infusion is also for personnel, for home health people, not provider. And um, it is for infusion. Hemodialysis. And peritoneal dialysis, one of the things you're going to need to know to be able to answer this is what's the differences between dialysis, how many different dialysis are there, what's the difference between hemo and peritoneal, would any one of those be considered an infusion procedure versus a home health procedure. This one's really difficult if you don't understand and fully know exactly what the differences are in all the home healths. So I put a little thing up that says there's three types of dialysis, in-center hemodialysis, home hemodialysis, and peritoneal dialysis. So hemodialysis is ongoing dialysis. They do it three to five times a week. It cleans your blood, hemo, blood, right, blood. And it's usually done at a dialysis center. Hemodialysis is accessed through the arm, Peritoneal dialysis is also ongoing dialysis, usually daily, um, but it collects waste from the blood by washing the empty space in the abdomen, which is your peritoneal cavity. And that washing is called an infusion because in a peritoneal dialysis, dialysis fluid, which is called the disalate, is infused into the abdomen cavity, or what they call the peritoneal cavity, through a catheter. It's kind of washing it out. So knowing if you're doing 
what dialysis it is, that's going to make a huge difference in knowing which one you're going to pick because these are all blood and hemodialysis where this one, the 96, is the only one that's an infusion. And that's the only one that is going to be peritoneal dialysis. So if you haven't already, right here at 99601 and 602, write peritoneal dialysis. Right here as your one word differences. That will make a huge difference. You'll be able to understand which one would be which. And you'll know that hemo would go somewhere else. But this one said it was peritoneal dialysis. So, of course, D is our answer. And I'll tell you why it's the answer. Why this 13? So, why we would be timesing it by 13? So, if we read the CPT code descriptor, it says... Um, home infusion, drug administered per visit up to two hours. And then our add-on code is for each additional hour. Our question says that the patient was seen three days out of, out of a week. And you know we're going to bill for a month. And the nurse did daily activities each week. And how long did she say she spent? that lasted three hours. So, if somebody's at your house three days a week, there's four weeks in a month, right? And those, this is for code nine, nine six oh one and it does for two hours they said they were doing they did three hours each visit so that's where they come up with our nine nine six oh two and it will have just as many visits three times four is twelve i can get at least that much that I know we're going to have 12 visits each time. I'm not sure how they got 13, but I don't know. Maybe if you take 30 days and divide it by something, I don't know. And there's 31 days. Maybe there's an extra day of the month. I don't know. But as far as I can count, <laughs> I know three days a week times four weeks is pretty close. But... Maybe there was a 31-day month. I don't know how they got 13, but that's as close as I can get. Anybody else got an answer for that extra day? I do have their rationale with this, but that gets me super close to picking out which answer is correct. If I know I'm peritoneal, I know it's an infusion, dialysis, it can only be one of these two. I know I have to times this one by 13 and this one by 13 to get my total hours because this is just two hours each day this will account for the extra hour that makes three hours times 13 visits so that's super handy dandy these do not they do not say the word each but what they do say is per visit so that per visit is your aka term for each that's the same thing as the word each. And, of course, R02 has the word each, so you know you can times it. But that per visit means you can time. So be sure and add your note here to say you can times both of the answers. Change this word to each. At least we got that done. And then you can put this example in there underneath it. But that's how they came up with that. Their rationale, let's see, how did they come up with that? What did they say about the 13? I don't know. 
I put some answers down about the 90966. It's for a provider. If you're going to bill for a month, then it's an actual MD going to the home and doing the dialysis for a month. That's what they use the 90966 for. Um, and then 9 is for hemo. That's for the blood. It's not the dialysis one, but I don't know how they got the 13, but I think they had a lot more rationale. I just didn't copy all of it, but hopefully that helps. Where? Oh, this is the pocket prep one. No, that's not the pocket prep one. Here's a pocket prep one. Let's see. What did they say about that? Oh, I got them to fix a question today, too. Pocket prep, I turned them in another question that they had incorrect. It was about um, um, it was this question. I had them fix it, and they did let me know they did fix it today, by the way, because I'm sitting here looking at pocket prep. Here is the question, and they did fix that question today. If by chance, I got I can't put the whole question in there because it's too wordy, but if by chance y'all have um, been doing this question on pocket prep, um, I had them fix that one today. They had the, the minutes and hours wrong. <laughs> yeah, I had them fix that one. They got back with me. Who is this? Michelle got back with me about that question. Yep, 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 yep. I had them fix that one. Um, let's see. How did they get the 13? It said 25 units. I don't know. They got, it's a wordy, wordy, wordy. Huh. They're saying the service was done three times a week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, there's, there are 13 in each month, not each 13 days total. So you would use 13 units. How do we know there's 13 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Fridays in a month? I have no idea how they got that answer, but I think there's 12. <laughs> But anyway, all right, where's my questions? Let me get back into chat. Let me see what y'all said. I told the guy at Lowe's to stay away from LG and Samsung do the parts are hard to get. Mm. He suggests staying with Maytag and Kilmore. Kim Kim Thank you. You have a grabber for yours. You got a step stool. Yep. My st feet will still come up off the step stool, too. Pathology codes. Can you please go over an example or two? Yep. Amy. I'm sorry to hear that, Amy. I know it, it's rough. CIC certification. CIC, oh my gosh. I just recently, where is, I was taking some of their CIC God, I did one of their CIC practice questions. Did you buy AAPC's practice questions for CIC? Number one is is number one. I 
where is right here um can i show this off will this come up huh peritoneal no i don't know if this will come up i wonder add add a display capture mm, not that one this one no not that one this one no but not that one nope cancel nope that did not work um window capture okay yeah that's what I want to show you can y'all see that good lord so can you see that white piece of paper is that displaying over the top of everything here um, I did the CIC practice exam <laughs> This week, um, I got 40 out of 44 questions right in 12 minutes. <laughs> that was fast. But the problem is, is a lot of them are fill in the blank. So you got to know PCS stuff. Um, and then when you get here down to the cases, you have to look up like 13 diagnosis codes and type them all in yourself super fast. And, you know, that diagnosis code number four, I know that's correct. Um, but, yeah, you there's no A, B, C, or D on a lot of these things. You have to type them out yourself. And if I go, what was number four? Was I-71? What did I do wrong? C.3, I forgot the three at the end what I did it's hard without a B C or D I love teaching because I can show you guys how to eliminate answers and get down to a 50 50 shot but CIC is a totally different bear where you got to know you got to fill in the blanks for answers and the procedure have that extra book and it's it's not easy Not easy to do. I got all that one correct, but boy, you can't miss one little thing. These practice questions will be most like the exam. Whatever you see here, uh, whatever is listed here, you'll get questions just like this. Um, and you just got to be fast. You got to be really fast. That's not it. Um, what did I do? This one. Get that off of there. Okay. I can try to make up something for um, CIC. I'm in the process of doing an ICD-10 um, study guide and a COC study guide. And then when I get through with that, I can work on CIC. Y'all work on these diagnosis code. I got a diagnosis code for IUD and the procedure with the IUD. What do you think the answer is while I'm reading chat? I can add a CIC room and I can start posting practice questions in there if that's what um, if I have an interest if people want to do that certificate that's a super tough one with the fill in the blanks that's scary but if anybody can do it we can that's for sure
under 959512, it says to use peritoneal, go to nine. Yep, you got to watch your, your parentheticals. That's right. That's the one thing that they're testing on. Did you know that that parenthetical was there? That's all they were looking for in that fancy little question that Pocket Prep wrote. And people say their questions are too easy. I think they're fantastic. That's a really good one. But also, it shows some of the anatomy stuff that goes on that you need to know about what's going on in some of those procedures that can be super helpful to a coder. It seems like a lot of times we need to know everything that a doctor knows, which is unfair unless we're going to get the same pay, right? <laughs> You think they assumed a month is five weeks? That could be. It could be. I couldn't figure out the 13. I don't know. They say 23 units or 25 units altogether. I don't know. You took your test on Saturday, got your results, but locked myself out of the AB. Oh, no. Don't you hate? They updated their system, and now they force you to log back in every, like, five days. With And the auto-save password function is now gone from... Google or from your desktop. You can't have it. I had to go into my settings and look up my old password that was saved on my desktop so that I could type it in because I've never had to type it in. Once I saved it the first time, Google just saved it, you know? And, uh, yeah, they recently updated their AAPC site to force you to actually have to type your password in every so often, like once a week. And I still have to struggle. And I had to go back and look at my passwords. It's a pain in the butt. But I guess they do that for security reasons. They got people sharing courses with other students, and I think they don't like that at all. Of course, they don't like that. So they um, put in that new feature to where password saving is not going to be available anymore because they didn't like people sharing their courses with other people. I never would have thought to do that, but I guess people do. There's not a way to reset your password without them. After CPC, well, what are you interested in? What would I, what certification would I recommend? Now, I know what's in high demand is probably CRC or CPMA, but there's a ton of certificates out there. Like you could just do cardiology or pediatrics, but it's, what are you into? CRC is nice because it's just diagnosis code. So you only have one book to take with you and learn from and worry with. So that's nice. But risk adjusting patients, that means sorting your population by your sickest patients um, and bringing those to the front, forefront so that you can um, get additional services to them is what CRC is doing.
Great, Amy. We'll get this going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for about the COC. COC has a lot more laws and billing rules in it than I was surprised. I figured it would just be more outpatient uh, CPT coding, but it technically has a lot more auditing rules and billing rules for, for me. That's kind of crazy. You know, I was surprised when I see those practice questions, how, um, how many, and it, it a little bit tougher anatomy for sure. Which of the following criteria should be, should a medical record meet according to Medicare and Medicaid CMS? The record should include date and the reason for the encounter, relevant history, findings, and any diagnostic test. Should the report be complete and legible? Huh. The report should include clinical impressions, diagnosis, plan of care, dates, observers, all of the above. What do you think? COC's got, and, and I like it. As far as like the rules and the dates and laws, you can just write those in the front of your CPT book. So anti-kickback laws and extra HIPAA stuff that they have you do and auditing stuff. You can just write that in an organized fashion in the front of your book. And then all the CPT coding and the diagnosis coding is all the same as CPC. So it doesn't seem like it would be too much harder. It's just... A little bit more rules to, to learn and but if you can just write them down and know where they are in your book then you should be good to go with COC y'all know what AAPC's favorite answer is right all of the above yeah yep 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 true or false annual wellness for Medicare Includes discussion and treatment of chronic illnesses. Sorry about that IUD question. It's a tricky one for sure. It's good to get it wrong with me. You won't get it wrong on the exam because you can make notes in the exam on that particular correct answer and get it down in your book and you'll always have it. True or false? Mm. Let's get out that ICD-10 book then. Oh. Implantable. C-34. Four. Four. Unspecified, because it's unspecified. You do not want to use unspecified, right? That it was specified in the chart. And that means interuterine. The birth control is inside the uterus. Many, many, many times during the exam, if you have a difference between unspecified code 
which is all yellow, and a green code, which is specified as to that speciality or specific location. You want to pick a green code versus the all yellow unspecified on the exam. PCS coders, we can unite in Discord group. I've got a ton of you guys' um, practice questions for that particular book in our Discord group. You have your own practice exam room, question room, and I post a bunch of them in there. I even attend some of you guys' workshops and stuff, and I post slides in there of those workshops so this one is all yellow in the book. It's unspecified. Um, this one is for pills. This one is for injectables. Right. And then 43 is for interuterine. Oh, am I looking at the wrong spot? I'm looking at the wrong spot. I am. O is for the insertion of it, the routine check, the removal, and the 3-3 three, three is the removal and reinsertion. What did we do to an encounter for uterine insertion? Well, it looks like to me, yeah. Looks like for the encounter for the insertion. Yeah, that does look like it should be for the O, wouldn't it? But they're saying two. Where did I get this question from? Oh, I know where I got it from. For routine O, oh, that's what I did. Yeah. No. I did it. I I typed that answer myself. This one is for the removal. I thought they were the same question and assumed the answer was C when I did this. So that's my fault. The questions are different in both question and answers. Both questions. So no, that's just my my fault. A when I was prepping the question, I just copied what B's answer was and put it there is what I did when I wrote, when I put the question here. My fault. But these are two different questions. So this one's just for the removal. So the removal is right, because that's the B. Yep, that was me. It's just me, me doing it wrong. This one for the Medicare wellness. What did you guys say on this one? Yeah, I just took, I thought the questions were the same question for both questions, and they just added the CPT code to the second question. But they're not the same question. They are two actual different questions. I was just in a hurry. Hey, Diana, good to see you. All right, true or false? True or false?
Kimberly says there's no discussion about chronic conditions in a Medicare annual wellness visit. Is she right? <laughs> no, I am so fallible. I never do watch my replays because I always find that I have an error in there somewhere. Every single live, there's something I've done wrong. Who knows? She is correct. Kimberly is knows her Medicare stuff. Very good. Which of the following statements about reporting a common code, a cold, is true? If a physician diagnoses a patient with a common cold, that the patient has an acute sore throat as a symptom, you can report both J-O-O -O and J-O-2. Ugh, I hate these wordy ones. If a physician diagnoses a patient with a common cold and that the patient has a chronic sore throat, you can report J-O-O -O and J-31.2. If an MD diagnoses a patient with a common code and they never pair that with a sore throat code, probably the never would be an alert there. If a physician diagnoses a patient with always, never and always, is medical coding that clear cut? It would be nice if it was. But I always try to stay away from never and always in any of these wordy questions, just because there's always exceptions with coding, you know? So we just need to know there's a difference between acute and chronic here. It's probably either A or B. Just knowing your guideline about it. And you'd know the answer. Everybody saying B? Good job. Good job, good job, good job. Here's a case. So they're wanting us, they're not going to give us MDM and they're not going to give us time. They want us to know, they want to they wanna know, are we minimal, low, moderate, high, and what kind of visit is this? I'm going to go yell at Travis real quick. We have an inpatient consultation as the header. All right, so we have a left hip fracture. Ooh, I thought I broke my hip. I am off the crutches now, guys. Thank goodness that took forever to heal. We have a consultation request from Dr. X. We have a 61-year-old patient who COPD, smoking, apnea, hypercholesterolemia, ulcer, osteoporosis, good gracious. She has had a pelvic fracture in the past. She was recently discharged from the hospital, undergone cardiac workup. She was house cleaning. Stripped fell while mopping the floor, of course, and fractured it again. She has a displaced hip fracture now, osteoporosis. The plan is to do what? To put a fixation in her left hip. Ouch. That means three days bed rest and six months physical therapy. Ouch. So what is the number and complexity of the problems addressed? And 
Do we get to bill a consultation, an office consultation, a hospital consultation, just a new patient visit, or initial inpatient? Did this doctor take over care? Those are things I'm thinking about. Yep, feeling better, feeling better. Looks like an SAT question, <laughs> right, Edith? Y'all are always wanting to see more cases. So what are we? Minimal, low, moderate, high. It's a hip fracture. She has COPD, sleep apnea, hypertensive coronary artery disease hypercholesterolemia, ulcers, osteoporosis, past fracture history. Whew. High complexity hospital consultation, moderate initial inpatient. Well, if she was Medicare, you know, Medicare doesn't pay for any consults, but... This does look like some doctor, whoever admitted her, did ask for a consult. So maybe we can bill a consult for this one. And she's refractured an, a recent fracture that was already healed. I think that throws more complexity in there. But I don't know if I'd do high. I'd probably pick moderate and I'd pick hospital consultation as long as she's not Medicare. It's Medicare and pay for no consultations. Let's see what we got. We do have moderate because the patient has a history of the pelvic fracture and multiple chronic conditions. This is considered an acute complicated problem, which is moderate. Huh. Interesting wording there. Acute complicated problem is a hip fracture. Hmm. And then we do get to bill inpatient consultation. According to the guidelines, the requirements for a consultation have been met. The service performed is at the request of a referring physician to evaluate the patient and give recommendations. The patient is Already an inpatient, which means all providers have access to the same medical record. Whatever that means. But I like the wording on that. Let's see. I'm going to go to my E&M chart. Y'all know that lovely thing that we have on like page 8 and 9? Something new I haven't seen before. But... Over here under moderate, I'm going to put history, hip fracture with multi chronics equals an acute complicated problem, really? Equals moderate. And I just put hip fracture at the top too. Interesting. Here's one for global procedures. So I think, right? Oh, RG, RVSs. Oh my, Medicare payments. So for resource value related, <laughs> resource based relative value scale. 
This sounds like a COC thing, maybe even a CIC thing. I don't think you'll see this for CPC. You might see this for COC. Oh gosh, it's beautiful outside. Oh wow. Sorry, the sun's going down and we have this orange sun that I just got distracted by. It is beautiful as the sun goes down. Wow. Pretty, pretty. Um, they are asking us about the scale used for Medicare payments. Resources cost is divided into three components. The physician's work, the practice expense, and resources based on prof Professional Liability Insurance, PLI, the physician work accounts for 52% of the procedure's total service relative value. The practice expense accounts for 44 and the insurance involved in insuring all of that is 4%. When referring to modifier usage, what is the post-operative period during and included in the surgical global packages for outpatient hospital services. Outpatient, outpatient. Outpatient doesn't have any global period, does it? Because if you're in and out same day, do they have global period? They don't have global period. I always look for that key word because... That always means no global period. Like I had my gallbladder done outpatient wise. And that means I had no time off work. I went to work the next day. I actually went to a movie premiere in Hollywood. But I did go the, I did, I did have the day off, but <laughs> I didn't. I was out on a sidewalk at 5 a.m. waiting for uh, Tom Cruise to show up or something one day. <laughs> Who was it? No, it was uh, Matthew. Uh, no, Michael Rodriguez showed up and Travis ended up on his um, Twitter page as a photo he took with him anyway for one of his movie premieres. Um, so anytime I remember outpatient, they have no global period. That means D has to be the answer because it's same day services. Yeah, I think. Is that right? It is right. Yay. I know nothing about RV codes at all, but I do know outpatient means no global period. So that helps with that question. Good gracious. Ooh. Injections. Hippix code. And I found, I wrote my own question for Botox. Anybody taking their exam this weekend? I've got one coming up uh, on Botox that I made myself because I couldn't find any. And somebody said, a little bird said that Botoxes could be on medical coding exams. Anyway, this one's morphine. So let's check out our HIPPIX codes. Don't forget when you're in J codes, usually your answer is not directly across from the J code and the descriptor, your answer will be three or four lines down where it says the drug name. So like for J3410, the drug name is under the drug column underneath here, not direct across. Anyway, J2270, sign that real quick. A2270. We've got morphine, 10 milligrams. Also look at your drug name, morphine sulfate. And then the 74 is morphine sulfate preservative free epidural. What kind of morphine did we do? Did we do, we did do preservative free. Perfect. So we did do the 74, so we'll get rid of C and D. Now we just need to know about our milligrams. The CPT code says 10 milligrams. We gave 20, so we do get to times two it. Yep, 
perfect. Good. Yep, 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 yep. Perfect. Modifiers. Oh my. Modifier 59, 79, 25, and 26. Which one would we use in this scenario? A Medicare patient is seen in the ER after a fall. After a low-level ER examination, the patient is found to have had a 2-centimeter laceration in the thigh. They have a 0.5-centimeter laceration at the wrist. The thigh was layered closure, intermediate repair, and the wrist was a simple repair. Select the modifier for the ER examination or the facility. Which one would we use? I'm just looking, reading chat, catching up on all chat. Y'all talking about gallbladders. <laughs> yeah, the sun, oh yeah, it's only 8 o'clock here and the sun was still out and it was just beautiful. I don't know if it'll come across on the screen for you guys, but you won't be able to see it. But God, it was beautiful. The The clouds there are super orange, but you it won't show through on my teacher camera but oh it was beautiful sun's gone down almost now but yeah it's still light here in Arizona it's only 8 p.m. here everybody saying C and A Let's see what we got we got C 25 We'll bill that nine, nine two, whatever for the outpatient, and then we'll add the twenty five modifier to show we did the repairs. What about this? We've got seventy eight, fifty eight, seventy nine, and seventy six. A surgeon places a self retaining indwelling urethral stent with a scope. Procedure Later that evening, due to complications, the patient returns to the OR for removal of the stent by the surgeon. What modifier are we going to use? Which one of those? What do you guys think? Y'all getting A's in there? Seventy eight, seventy eight. Let's see. Yep, 78. I wrote on my little notes on that cover of our CPT book, this one says complication. Anytime you see the word complication, 78 right beside it. The reason to use modifier 76 is which one of these examples? I was like, oh, what are they doing? They're rewriting these and making them more difficult as they go. It's crazy. All right, which one is a reason to use 76? Um, to explain why the patient returned to the operating room 
for a repeat procedure during a post-op period or to indicate the same procedure was done repeated by the same physician on the same day or only to supply information for reimbursement and not to be affected in any way or to explain why a procedure was duplicated by the same provider for the appropriate reimbursement. What do you think? Everybody saying B on this one? B is it. Good job. Good job. Perfect. All right. When are we going to use the modifier 27? When a facility codes for a clinic visit? When two E&M services are provided by the same day for the same facility at the same department? When two E&M services are performed on the same day, the same facility, the same or different department? Or when a facility codes for an ED visit? Oh, Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you, Deep. You're awesome. When are we going to use modifier 27? Same or different department? Yay, Kathy. I hope that membership helps you out. You now have access to my old workshops and book prep videos. got two TikTok videos I need to repost. I did a bunch of practice questions yesterday and the day before. I need to download those. I did two videos, I think three hours one time yesterday and another hour late last night on TikTok. I need to download those and post them on the YouTube. I haven't done that yet. This one is C. When two or more E&Ms, same or different department was key there. What about what modifier indicates the procedure or service is discontinued prior to admission of the anesthesia? Are we modifier 79, 58, 53, or 73? Seventy three. Good job. Here is your Botox question I made for you guys. Don't forget, some of these modifiers have better um, explanations of what they are in the back of the book. We've got an Appendix A um, that have the full descriptor of everything that's inside the the descriptor and your hit picks book also has full descriptors of all the hit picks or all the um, modifiers that are full descriptors too 
Anyway, let's get here. Let's go to our hit picks codes for Botox. J O five. So are we an eighty eight, an eighty six, or an eighty eight? J O five. There we go. Got lots of uh, 86 is A version, 87 is B version, and 88 again is another A version. Which one did we use? Don't forget to use the drug names too, can be helpful. This one's just saying it's Botox. They don't have the particular MYO block listed there or the XMN we have a patient who was given 50 units of Botox and the last patient of the day so the remaining units of the vial must be discarded. So right away we know we have 100 units of Botox used. So looking at 86, it's only got five units, right? Um, 87 has 100 and then 88 has one unit crazy Insane. What do you guys think the answer is? They used five units in ten different locations. We go look and see what that JW modifier is. My clue is in, since it's the only one that is has a modifier with it, JW is a modifier that says the amount discarded and not administered to any patient. And it does look like we did give away 50 doses and destroy 50 doses. Um, so, out of all the answers possible, I mean, A just seems more reasonable than anything else because you're going to account for 50 doses of that 100, 100 vial unit right there, and then you're going to account for the 50 doses that you destroy and they weren't given to a patient. Yep. That is something that they do do in real life. This isn't an AAPC question. This is just a question that I did. Um, this is how you bill in real life, um, how you destroy units. You do attach it to the patient's claim. It just is for tracking purposes. It's not that they're getting billed for that, um, but it accounts for the use of the vial because we have to account for what happened to the medicine. You can't just, because this stuff could get sold over the counter or over the market or, you know, whatever. People don't, you can't just take it home. So we have to account for every single dose that is in or purchased by a facility or hospital or doctor's office, whether we destroy it or not. 
it just it all gets accounted for on claims. So anyway, um, this is the information that comes back from my billing uh, software at work that tells us that we need to bill for the 50 units. Now, AAPC wouldn't times it by 50 because the vial comes with already 100. They don't, they don't bill that way. But in real life, it'll be a little different for you guys. But um, they would have not done the times 50. They could have done the JW, which would have been interesting. But I don't know how they would have accounted for half the vial without doing the timeses. Anyway. Um, one interesting thing that is cool they do have a generic version of the um botox it's myoblock which is in the hipix book which is cool um if you're going to report just five units it tells us to see that one if you're going to do one unit it's this one um Individual payers may pay for other things or not pay for other things. But this is just stuff that comes back from um, my billing stuff at work. J codes represent drugs that cannot be self-administered, like um, chemotherapy or autoimmune drugs, um, inhaled solutions or miscellaneous drugs. I thought that was interesting that there, none of them are going to be self-administered, so... I just put it there just because I thought that was an interesting sentence. But it did introduce us to a new modifier that I know you guys haven't seen. I've heard Botox could be on the exam. I don't know how the question is written or anything, but um, that particular 87 is the one that we use in the doctor's office and give to patients. The 86 and 88. Seven, I mean, the 86 and 88 are something we don't use very often. So, it's interesting. All right. Rapid fire, some hard anatomy ones. <laughs> How are skin grafts measured? Are we doing centimeters, square centimeters, percentages, or inches? I have some cardiology ones that I know somebody wanted cardiology today. It doesn't look like we're going to get to them, but um, we will on Monday. Good night, guys. I see some of you dropping off. I know it's getting late for you guys. The sun's finally going down here. <laughs> Does the YouTube subscription give you access to the book prep videos? Yes, it does. Two years worth of those videos. Yep. Good night. Thanks, Diana. I hope it's helpful. Yeah. So this is square centimeters, right? What is the term for a hollow organ joined together surgically? Closure, destruction, anatomical reconstruction, or anomostasis? Y'all know I'm saying it wrong. Use the books. Make notes in the books with all the questions that we're doing. That way, you, if you ever see these questions again, you know, already have what Jen said the answer was. Based on word parts, what's the definition of splingo uvorectomy? 
Are we creating a hole in the ovary, surgically removing the ovary? Are we repairing the ovaries and tubes or removal of the ovaries and tubes? What are we doing? Yep, D again. Good job. Based on word parts, what structure does paro china, what the heck, I don't even know how to pronounce that, refer to? This word right there. Use your prefixes and suffixes. Are we dealing with the hair, nails, sweat glands, or parathyroid? No worries, Diana. Rewatch it tomorrow. It'll be there. Hey, MK. Aw, she's still there. Best wishes ever. Everybody think happy thoughts about MK's mama. We are dealing with the nails. Inflamed nail bed. You see how they put that parathyroid in there trying to confuse you because it starts with P-A-R. So be careful. A colidonkel cyst is a cyst origin from where? Gallbladder, liver, liver, common bile duct, or intestine? Coli, coli. What you think? Hmm. Peronka, Anki, Anki, Ankia. Oh, Edith, I got no phonics training at all. I'm a 70s baby and I did not learn any phonics. I even did first grade twice. I did not learn a thing in school at all. Common bile duct. Which type of membrane is found in the lining of the interior walls of the digestive system? Do we have mucus, serous, sinval, or cutaneous? What kind of membrane do we have in our digestive system? Coley bladder. Thank you, Twinkle. Mucus. Got to move all that food down and around and about. Which layer of epidermis is normally found on the palms of hands and soles of feet? Ugh. Which stratum is it? C, L, P, or R? What you think? Thank y'all for the thumbs up. Thank y'all for sending happy thoughts to MK. That's super stressful for her. Bless her heart. We are going to be lucid, right? Yep. 
lucid. The heart receives deoxygenated blood in the right atrium via which vessel? And then I have some cardiology practice questions once we get through a bunch of anatomy questions, but we'll do those on Monday. We'll just finish up this first cardio question real quick so y'all know what to study. I'm going to go download some videos from TikTok and post those because I think I was on all day yesterday on TikTok showing off some extra questions, mostly COC questions. So, but I'll get those videos posted. And then I've got to get out this um, ICD-10 study guide for you guys. Almost done. Good question. I meant to put down the page numbers where the answers are for all these anatomy questions, and I ran out of time. Um, so I can go back and do these because that's really what I need to do is put the page numbers down. Of course, they tell us what the answers are, but I need to go find their they're answered. They're in the books. I can I can do that. I can fix that. I'll do that for Monday. Because that would be way help, a lot more helpful than just doing the random at anatomy questions without knowing where the answers are in the books. They're in there. Most of these are going to be in the ICD-10 book right before you code a certain section. Inferior and superior vena cava. But yeah, I'll make me some notes. Go back and put the page numbers down. Numbers down for Monday. Is today not Friday? Oh, God, I thought today was Friday. It feels like Friday. <laughs> yeah, I'll be live on Friday. Good gracious. I'm already thinking today is Friday. It's been a long week already, guys. Yeah. Next week on Wednesday, I will not be live. We're going to go to a water park because that's the kids' last week of summer vacation. I'm going to just take them up to Vegas and let them run around at Calabunga Bay on Tuesday and Wednesday. But, yes, I will be live Friday. Sorry. I was sitting here all night thinking today was Friday already. <sighs> I'm not there yet. It's only Wednesday, huh? Told y'all I'm scatterbrained today because I've been really super busy. Had to go enroll the boys, get their IDs done at high school. On my lunch break, I didn't get any break. Haven't eaten yet. I need to go eat. It's been a crazy busy day with work and everything else going on. Plus trying to get you guys some material up. But yep, I'll be back on Friday. I've already got the YouTube link up on YouTube, so it's ready to go. But yeah. I'll get these re-answered for Friday instead of Monday. And we'll do cardiology on Friday night if y'all want to hang out with me. We're going to do some ICD-10 in cardiology and CPT codes in cardiology after these anatomy ones. So, And I'll show you where the page numbers are. So we'll have fun on Friday night. <sighs> Bring your 30-pound cats and your tea and <laughs> we'll get going. All right. I love you guys. I will see you on Friday night. Best wishes so much, MK, on your mom. And I hope your sister is in a good mood and is nice tomorrow. Lab and path. Yes, more lab and path. Yep. Lab and path questions. Yep. I'll get you some of those too. All right, guys, I love y'all. I will see you guys on Friday night. I hope this was helpful. Sorry about all the mistakes, guys. <laughs>